Jack Ebling here with Lindsey Huddleston at Spartan Stadium. Frigid Spartan Stadium. Wasn't that bad in the press box, but no. for the people who were here, the few who showed up, they got to see Michigan State become bowl eligible. Yes. Barely. 1916, it took a fourth Matt Coughlin field goal mm -hmm. and then a closing stop on downs. Mm -hmm for Michigan State to skank out the win. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was a game the Spartans were favored by 21 and a half points. Mm -hmm. It's almost like this game has been indicative of the season and the expectation of what the Spartans have to do. Ugly wins and uh, they had to do everything they could just to get this and this was the outcome tonight. It reminded me a lot of the Rutgers game mm -hmm. at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. Cody White finally scored on a jet sweep mm -hmm. and that gave Michigan State the 14-10 win. But uh, this game, it looked like it might get away that mm -hmm. Maryland uh, which hadn't scored, uh, hadn't been ahead in uh, more than a month. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you got that going. And then uh, finally Michigan State made just enough plays and got a few breaks. There was a fumble, looked like it could be recovered, and it was nudged out of bounds. And uh, Brian Lewerke took it from there, 30 mm -hmm. for 42 mm -hmm. for 342 yards, his last game in Spartan Stadium. He missed some guys too. Right. But Trey Mosley was fantastic. They didn't know if he would play or continue with this red shirt. Eight grabs for 73 yards. Mm. Turned out that was a good decision. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Devontae Dobbs did not burn his red shirt because mm -hmm. of an injury. Mm -hmm. But uh, Brandon Wright did. He mm -hmm. came in and had to play. So uh, Michigan State, as Mark D'Antonio said, down to the sixth le left tackle. Right. And uh, they got that done. So. Um, you look at this season, Lindsay, and you see the games they gagged away. Right. To Arizona State and mm -hmm. Illinois. And then you see the four that really matter. Mm -hmm. Ohio State, Wisconsin, Penn State, and Michigan outscored 144 to 27. And that's what people are going to remember, whether this team goes to Detroit or New York. Well, as you've often said, those are the games that Mark D'Antonio is paid to win. That's right. You know, the other games that, you know, come, that's okay. But those big marquee games against those rated opponents, that's the expectation. And he has raised the bar. Uh, when he went 36 and 5, when he won 40 out of 45 games, mm -hmm. uh, 6 and 6 is not acceptable anymore. Yeah, but it just seems that considering what we saw with this season, the yeah. ups and downs, it was a nice landing spot to kind of finish things out and kind of allow the program to save face a little bit as they transition into next season. Uh, not a pretty face. Not a pretty face. <laughs> uh, I guess it could have been worse, right? True. 5 and 7. Would have been worse. They wouldn't have got the practice for young players. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have had the bowl streak now at three and counting. Correct, correct. Uh, and for these guys who are going out, uh, they'll have that memory. Mm -hmm. They did come back, come from behind and mm -hmm. win instead of giving a game away at the end, mm -hmm. which they had kind of mastered the ability to do. They really did. Uh, and Michigan State made some plays. Josiah Scott with a big interception. Mm -hmm. and Mike Panashuk with a fumble recovery. He's moving fast today. Yeah, some mm -hmm. other guys made plays. Uh, Anthony Williams, some receptions mm -hmm. out of the backfield. So there were some moments, but you walk away with kind of an unfulfilled feeling. With sure. This. I think the biggest concern would have been had they not won today and us having this discussion about Michigan State not even making it to a bowl. And I think that kind of, you know, puts a little bit of, uh, you know, a tourniquet on the wound a little bit. True indeed, there are bigger expectations that were not met. You talk about the wins and the losses. No one's really impressed with the teams that were beat this year, including Western Michigan, my alma mater. But also looking at the wins and those losses, I should say, against those ranked teams, that's what it's all about. But is Michigan State on a trajectory to compete with those teams in the future going forward under D'Antonio's era? Well, if it's a tourniquet, it stops the bleeding long enough to get to the hospital. <laughs> right, right. But there's still surgery that needs to be performed. Sure, true. True. And uh, for this team, we'll see where it takes them. We'll know that a week from tomorrow mm -hmm. when the bowl pairings are announced. And mm -hmm. It's almost certain that Michigan State's going to play in the Quick Lane Bowl on the 26th of December or the Pinstripe Bowl in Yankee Stadium on the 27th. Mm -hmm. Saves Michigan State about a million and a half bucks if it plays in Detroit. Makes it easier for fans to get there. Sure. Uh, but mm, that's not Michigan State's call. It doesn't get to pick. Right. Uh, there's a pecking order here. Right. And uh, if I'm the pinstripe bowl, frankly, I'd rather have Illinois, which hasn't been to a bowl and it's got a geeked up fan base sure. and hasn't been anywhere, sure. 
because they're going to travel to New York. They're excited. Yeah. They've had a and great Michigan season. Michigan State fans, usually you don't want a team that's been disappointing at right. your bowl game because right. fans won't go. Yeah. I think the comment, the best logic would be allow Michigan State fans to go down to Detroit. And you're right, a fan base like Illinois, who's had a great yeah. season considering what they thought they were going to have, would be excited and ready to pay that extra tax when they go to New York to pay, you know, <laughs> that lifestyle fee to be there, huh? Yeah. Hey, uh, next week, we got a big week in yes. store. Yes. Tuesday night, Michigan State versus Duke. Duke is in the building. Both these teams lost last week. I know, I know. That was a stunner. Right. Uh, Duke's loss to Stephen F. Austin. Mm -hmm. No one saw that coming. Right, Michigan right. State losing uh, in Maui to Virginia Tech. Unfortunately, yeah. Came back and won the last two games. But mm -hmm. uh, it's Michigan now that's the talk of the college basketball. Yes, they game. are. The Wolverines or Louisville will be number one, I'm guessing, when the polls release uh, on Monday. Uh -huh. But uh, Michigan State. Saturday, mm -hmm. you'll be with me and Doug Warren mm -hmm. down at Lucas Oil Stadium. Yes, watching the rematch: Wisconsin and Ohio State, Minnesota coming up short at home, having a chance to be the eighth Big Ten team to get to Indianapolis. Didn't happen, so we have the teams that have been there the most. Sure, and they'll be playing again for the championship. And Ohio State certainly looked like a number one ranked team today, 29-point sure win over Michigan in Ann Arbor. Right, they looked like that early in the season when we got down to Columbus, and they're looking like this as they're wrapping up the season. Looks like they're going to be the team to beat to keep their focus. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, we're going to have press pass tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. And we're going to have Graham Couch with okay. Tom Crawford mm -hmm. and Rico Beard. Okay, good. that's a good And group. Uh, we're going to have you back on in December as okay. well for that okay. show. I was looking forward to that. And we'll be talking to you again uh, Tuesday after Michigan State Duke in Breslin Center. If you're lucky enough to have tickets, God bless you. We'll be right back Tuesday night here on a Press Pass Preview.